August 17, 1992, 11-year-old Holly Staker was graped and deleted while babysitting two young children in Waukegan, Illinois. About 10 weeks later, on September 29, 1992, police received a tip from a prison inmate that another inmate believed he knew who deleted Holly Staker. This ultimate inmate, who was believed to know who deleted Holly Staker, was a teenager named Juan Rivera. Juan Rivera was a 19-year-old former special education student born in Puerto Rico, who was in prison for a prior burglary offense. As a result of the tip from an informant in prison, law enforcement investigators began focusing on Juan Rivera as the main suspect in the at the time of the crime, Rivera was wearing an electronic monitor from a previous conviction. Electronic monitoring system records showed that Rivera did not leave his home on August 17, 1992. Phone records also showed a call from Rivera's home to a relative in Puerto Rico that evening. Fingerprint evidence also taken from the crime scene did not match Juan Rivera. Starting on October 26, detectives started questioning Juan Rivera. The questioning would continue for the next four days. During the initial questioning, Juan Rivera denied any knowledge of the crime. On October 27, 1992, Juan Rivera was transferred to the Lake County Jail and given a polygraph test, which yielded no results for the investigators. On October 29, 1992, the detectives conducting the interrogation requested that Rivera undergo another polygraph test. During this test, Mr. Rivera was reported as exhibiting general deception and subsequently admitted that he did lie to the test question about his alibi, but continued to deny any involvement in the deletion of Holly Staker. Despite the polygraph test results, during trial the jury was led to believe that Rivera failed a polygraph test. By the end of the fourth day, around midnight, after the interrogation had taken its toll on Rivera and became accusatory, Rivera broke down and apparently nodded when asked if he had graped and deleted Holly Staker. Despite the reluctant admission by Juan Rivera, the interrogation continued until 3 a.m. when the investigators left to type a confession for Rivera to sign. Minutes later, jail personnel reportedly saw Juan Rivera beating his head against the wall of his cell in what was later termed a psychotic episode. According to a prison nurse, Rivera was in an acute psychotic state and was not in touch with the reality of what was going on around him. Nevertheless, within a few hours, Rivera signed the typed confession that the investigators had prepared. The typed document, a narrative account of what the investigators claimed Rivera told them, was so riddled with incorrect and implausible information that Lake County State's attorney Michael Waller instructed the investigators to resume the interrogation in an effort to clear up the inconsistencies. On October 30th, Rivera's mental state had not improved, so he was placed in heavy restraints and a prison psychiatrist prescribed Haldol, Cogentin, and Ativan for Juan Rivera. Before being interrogated again, Rivera signed a rights waiver and the interrogation resumed. During this interrogation, detectives utilized the Reed interrogation technique. The Reed technique is an accusatory based interrogation process in which the investigator tells the suspect that the results of the investigation clearly indicate that they did commit the crime in question. According to a ruling made in July 2012 by Judge Mike Dinkle from a provincial court in Canada quote, stripped to its bare essentials, the Reed technique is a guilt-presumptive, confrontational, psychologically manipulative procedure 
whose purpose is to extract a confession. End quote. Despite having no physical evidence being found linking Juan Rivera to the crime, Rivera's case was taken to court and Rivera was charged with first-degree The jury trial began on November 1, 1993, with the prosecution's case based primarily on the second confession. On November 19, the jury found Rivera guilty and the prosecution asked for a sentence. The jury rejected the sentence, but the judge, Christopher Stark, sentenced Rivera to life in prison a month later. On November 9, 1996, the Illinois Appellate Court reversed the conviction based on the cumulative effect of trial errors and remanded the case for a new trial. On September 16, 1998, Rivera's second jury trial began. Again, the prosecution primarily relied on the second confession. But, it also produced an eyewitness to the who identified Rivera as the man who stabbed Staker. The witness, Taylor Engelbrecht, was one of the two children for whom Staker was babysitting when she was attacked and was just two years old at the time. Furthermore, the results of the polygraph examination were admitted at trial, but the defense was barred from asking questions that would make it clear that the deception indicated by the polygraph did not implicate Rivera in the crime. On October 2, after deliberating 36 hours over four days, the jury found Rivera guilty, and Judge Stark again sentenced Rivera to life in prison. On December 12, 2001, the Illinois Appellate Court affirmed the second conviction. In 2004, Rivera filed a motion to test the DNA from the vaginal swabs taken from the crime scene. On May 24, 2005, DNA tests eliminated Rivera as a source of the semen recovered from Staker's on August 29, 2006, Judge Stark himself vacated Rivera's conviction and ordered a third trial. Despite the DNA exclusion, Lake County State's attorney Michael Waller chose to retry the case. On April 13, 2009, Rivera's third jury trial began, again under Judge Stark. The assistant state's attorney Michael Mermel made the controversial decision to retry the case. His team argued that Staker may have been sexually active, or that lab technicians mishandled the DNA. Defense experts noted that if Staker had intercourse prior to the fatal attack, Staker would have been found on her underwear. Tests on her undergarments were negative for sperm. The victim's twin sister also denied that Holly was sexually active at the time of the murder. On May 8, the jury found Rivera guilty, despite the exculpatory DNA evidence. On June 25, 2009, Judge Stark sentenced Rivera to life in prison for the third time. On December 9, 2011, the Illinois Appellate Court ruled that Rivera's conviction was unjustified and cannot stand, and on January 6, 2012, Waller announced that the state would dismiss the charges. Lake County State's attorney Michael Waller told the press that, Today, I believe the right thing is to bring to a conclusion the case against Mr. Rivera by electing not to appeal the reversal of his conviction. Juan Rivera had served 20 years in prison. After serving 20 years in prison, Rivera filed a federal civil rights case against officials of the city of Waukegan and Lake County for wrongful conviction. He received a 20 million US dollar settlement, which at the time was the largest ever settlement for a wrongful conviction in US history.